All right, in this video, we are going to take a look at whether or not the sum of one over radical n plus radical n plus one converges or diverges. So that's what we're interested in. Um, and we're gonna do it two different ways. So first, uh, I look at this and I think that uh, this sort of series kind of um, looks a little like the sum of just one over radical n plus radical n. Um, which would be the sum of one over two radical n. So I'm feeling like whatever this series does will be the same as what um, the sum of one over two root n does. And one over two root n does the same thing as one over root n. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do a limit comparison to one over root n. Um, this is a really common thing to do with series is uh, you look kind of like dominant terms, so that like radical n plus one out at infinity is basically just radical n. Um, and that's where I came up with the idea to do this. So I'm gonna start out using limit comparison tests. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of the given thing over the one that I've come up with. So uh, you need to know what the series you're comparing it to does. So I know that one over root n diverges, so I should be able to do this. Uh, I'm gonna simplify a complex fraction here to get root n over root n plus root n plus one. Um, and then I look at that and I think that limit is definitely one half. Um, but there, there's a chance that you don't look at that and think that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna kind of do the work. So uh, over here, uh, what I would do is I'm gonna factor root n out of root n plus one. So I'm just rewriting this a little bit. Um, n is positive, so this is definitely not a problem. Um, so we have this, and then I would divide everything I see by root n, and that'll change this to look like this. And then if I let n go to infinity, one over n definitely goes to zero, so I get one over one plus one, so I get one half, which is, if you weren't sure if that limit was one half, or you just don't wanna take my word for it, there's some work to justify it. Okay, so one half is definitely less than one. And now we just have to write it up. So since the sum of one over root n diverges, it's a p-series with p equals one half. Um, uh, that means that we automatically know that the other series does the exact same thing because we got a ratio of less than one. So we will say the sum of one over root n plus root n plus one, I don't know why I find that so hard to say, um, diverges by the limit comparison test. Okay, um, and then I said I would do this two different ways. So I'm gonna do this in, in a kind of a non-standard way. So uh, I'm more gonna use the definition of a convergent series rather than any of the series tests in particular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the limit of the partial sums of this thing. And the reason I might consider doing that is, um, and this, uh, you might not look at it and think this, but I look at that and I think it feels sort of like a telescoping series maybe. Um, and I only feel that way because I've done a lot of stuff with telescoping series. And also when I see one over, let's say one over a plus b with radicals involved, I kind of think maybe I should rationalize that thing. So that's actually gonna be my first step. So I'm gonna rewrite the inner function there. So I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate, which would be uh, radical n minus radical n plus one over radical n minus radical n plus one. So let's do that. So we're rationalizing the denominator, which is a really good calculus skill to have. Um, you don't do it with series all that often, but I'm doing it here, so who knows. Uh, I'm gonna simplify this. So the numerator just simplifies to that, obviously. And then the denominator will uh, simplify to radical n times radical n is just n. The middle terms cancel, and then we get minus the quantity n plus one. So it's n minus the quantity n plus one. And then that we can uh, look at. So that denominator is just equal to negative one if you distribute and collect. So really we just get this, root n plus one minus root n. Okay. So this uh, looks interesting, it looks like it might telescope. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, substitute some numbers. So I decided to go from zero to infinity, I guess, um, just to make it a little clearer what's going on. One, it, it doesn't matter where you start, if it diverges, it diverges. So I just plugged in a bunch of numbers. Um, and then, so these are the numbers that I plugged in. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is look at the partial sums. So for the partial sums, uh, I wanna come up with like a notation that makes sense. So I'm just gonna say S, I'm gonna start with S sub zero. 
and that's when I just include uh, that zeroth term, so just here. So that sum, partial sum is one. And then if I do S sub one, so I go the zeroth term and the first term, add those up and the one and negative one cancel and we just get root two. If we keep going, S sub two would be these three terms and everything except root three cancels. Um, S sub three is gonna do kind of the same thing. Everything except for that root four is gonna cancel. And so I, I definitely see a pattern here. So I'm gonna say S sub K is just root K plus one. And uh, so that's always the Kth partial sum. So what I can do is I can take the limit as K approaches infinity of the partial sum. And that is definitely just infinite. So the square root of infinity plus one, definitely infinite. And since the limit of the partial sums does not converge to anything, um, we automatically know that the summation, the series itself diverges. So this is kind of an atypical way of doing it, but it definitely works. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.